Hey BlenderBob here, a few years ago I did a clip called Pipeline that was explaining the pipeline we use at Real by Fake and I also gave a talk at the Beacon conference a few years ago about it and a lot of people asked me about the layer manager, they really really wanted it but it's something that we couldn't share because it was hard coded for our system and it was using external libraries and everything so sorry we couldn't do it. But you know what? I decided to do it anyway to make an add-on that would reproduce what we have at Real by Fake and make it even better. And I'm happy to share it with you. Okay, so first we need to install the add-on. So we're going to go into the edit preferences, into the get extension. It doesn't appear on the list here because it hasn't been approved by the Blender team. I hope it will be, uh, but this is brand new. I need to submit it first. For the meantime, you will need to download it from the GitHub page. All you need to do is come here and download the raw file. From there, you're going to go into install from disk. You're going to choose the file and it's going to be installed automatically. Okay, so we got the junk shop here and let's say we want to set up render layers. So uh, we have this one here. We're going to start with the background. So background and uh, on the background, I just want the background and uh, I want the lights and I want the camera. I don't want the floor. So this is my background. And on the background, I want to, I want all these passes and I want the uh, miss pass, for example. Now, if I want another layer, I have to click here. I can copy settings, which I don't want. I just want to create a new one. And on this one, I have to, again, decide what I want to see or not. So this one is going to be for, let's say, the shop itself. So I don't want the background. I want the girl. I want the accessories. I don't want the robots because I'm going to make them on a separate uh, render. So I got all this stuff here. Let's say the floor. Do I want the floor? Yes, I want the floor. And again, you would have to come here and set up which passes that you want to render your stuff. And uh, maybe you want the cryptomat too. So if you have a lot of render layers you want to do, it can be very cumbersome to decide all these passes that you want and create all these layers. And it's a lot of trouble for me. And I wanted something that would deal with it with only one simple interface. Here comes the render manager. So here you can see a list of all your render layers. Uh, you can easily switch from one to another just by pressing this button here. So I go back to my background, I go back to my kiosk. Here you can decide if you want it to render or not. And here you have a copy paste button, I will come back to this later. You can also add a new layer if you want, or delete one. So I will press the plus here, and I can rename it directly from here. So robot. Now again, I would have to turn on and off all the collections that I want, but here's the collection manager that will allow you to manage all the layers at the same time. So if I click on it, I get this. So you get all your collections here and you get all your render layers here. So for the robot, I don't want the background, I don't want the shop, I don't want the accessories. I do want the robot, I want the lights, I want the camera, and I want the floor. But I don't want the smoke and I don't want the dialogues, and that's another collection in there. So dialogues, I don't want it. And the smoke, where is the smoke? The smoke is under the robot itself, I think. Yeah, there it is. So I want to turn off the smoke. So this way I will only have this. And what about this little guy here? Maybe I don't want this guy here. I will t take it off. So you can really control everything. Not only you can control the collections on or off, but you can also decide if you want them as a holdout or if you want the indirect only. So everything can be managed in one simple interface. Now for all these render layers, you would have to set up all the passes. And again, you would have to switch layer every time you want to do this. Well, we got an interface for that. It's called the render layer settings. And here you get all your render layers and you get all the passes where you can easily turn on enough stuff. So let's say that for uh, this one here, I want the normal, I want this stuff here. Uh, the background is not going to move. I don't want any vector passes, but I will do need it for the robots because I'm going to do 2D motion blur for some reason, whatever. You decide everything that you need and you can also copy from one to another. So I could say all the settings, let's, let's make it clearer this way. Here I can copy here and I can paste them here on this layer. So this way I know they are exactly the same. But this one I will add the cryptomat on it. And you can do a material override, world override, or samples override. So everything is available here. So at this point, if you wanted to render this as a multi-layer EXR, you would get a huge file with all the render layers and all the output passes. And if you want to re-render one render layer, you would have to re-render the entire thing. So that doesn't make sense. That's why we're going to split it. Every render layer will have two files, one for the color and one for the data. The color one can be either 16 or 32 bits, depending on which button you click on the interface. But the data pass will always be 32 bits because that's what you need if you use Cryptomat. This way, everything is much lighter. And if you need to re-render only one layer, then it's not a problem because the other ones are not going to be affected. So if I go into create render nodes, 
you will see that it separated all the render layers and it created two output files here. So you have one, this one here is the background because the, 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 the render layer is the background here. And it created a folder called background. And you have another one here for the data pass. And this one is going to be called background underscore data. And here you will have all the data pass and the, uh, the color pass. They are separated. So this one is 16 bit. This one is 32 bits. If you do want this one in 32 bits, you can always click it on here. But usually 16 is way enough for what you need. So now you get all your layers that are separated. And you can see you have the alpha over nodes here. This is a preview. So it will take this one, it will add it on top of this one, will add it on top of this one, and you will get your composite. And the composite is what you will get here. And that's why I put it as JPEG, because I don't want a crazy EXR just for that. JPEG is okay. But if you want an EXR, you can change it to EXR too, if you want. And that's why here it's important to have the right order. So you want the background, and then you want the kiosk on top, and then you want the robot. But you could change the order if you want. You can move this one up or move it down. So this way you can adjust to make sure that your pre-comp is going to be OK. Now, this is very cool. You're going to get six files plus seven with the pre-comp. Now, if you go to Nuke or to uh, Resolve or any other compositing software, you will have a problem because Blender works Z up and all the other software work Y up. And that's going to be a problem when you use the position pass, the normal pass, and the vector pass. Let me turn on the vector pass here, vector pass on this one. OK. Uh, you can see that the connection hasn't been made. You need to uh, click again on Create Render Nodes, and it's going to connect it. Now, uh, to fix this, you have something called Make Y Up. And if you click on this and regenerate, you'll see that it created these groups here. And what they do, if I take this one here and I expand it, and I check inside, you will see that it will separate the X, Y, and Z. This uh, channel, the Y, will be multiplied by minus 1. And then I change the order also. X becomes X. This one was Y. It becomes Z. And the Z becomes uh, Y. And that's what you need to make it work in Nuke. It's going to do this for the position pass. And it's going to do another magic for the vector to make sure that everything works well. Not only that, because you're going to Nuke, it will also change here instead of image, it's going to be RGBA. So you won't need a shuffle node to be able to see your image. You're going to see it as soon as you bring it into Nuke. So this is very cool. Also, a lot of compositors don't like to have diffuse, directional, indirect, and uh, the color, and you have to combine them together. They don't know how to do it in Nuke. They don't know the recipe. They don't want to deal with this. They're used to have just a diffuse, a glossy, and uh, the transmission pass. So you can combine them together by clicking this on. So you click again on Create Render Nodes, and now everything has been combined together. And in the output, you only get your diffuse, glossy, and transmission. Now, if you go into your render settings and you turn on denoising, that's very nice. But it's only going to denoise the image itself, not the other passes. Well, now you can. You have the per pass denoising here. You need to turn it on, and you decide what you want to denoise. Of course, we want the image, the diffuse, glossy, transmission. Click on Create Render Nodes, and you see it added all the denoise uh, nodes in there. Uh, you can also do it on the alpha, the volume direct, volume indirect, shadow catcher, and here we go. Everything has been denoised. Now, you can also embed the noisy passes because for some reason, some people would like to have them. So if you click on this, you see that all the noisy passes have been added here. But maybe you don't want them in your color pass because, you know, there's already a lot of stuff there. So maybe we want to save them separately. So you have an option for that. It created a new file here, and this one has all the noisy images without messing with this one up here. Also, you can uh, save all the original passes here. So if you click on Create Render Node, it's going to create one file with everything in it. A very heavy file with all the passes. Everything is in there. And that is the Render Manager. I hope you will enjoy it. More features will be added on the EV side. Right now, it's mostly for cycles, but you can still use it with EV. still going to work. Uh, I would like to thank Thinkerboy and MJ for their incredible help on developing this add-on. Thank you so much. The link is in the description. Bye.